Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk. And today I've um, dug an old PC out and I think what I'm going to have a look at is some of the software that um, came with the eBay lot. Um, what I've got here, I've, yeah, I've shown this in a previous video, um, to be honest, when I resurrected it. We've got an old um, digital DEC PC. Um, it's, it was a 486 um, SX33. I've actually... For this video I've downgraded it slightly. I wanted a really, quite an early computer to have a look at some of the software that I got because I've got software from probably the mid 80s up to the very very late 90s, possibly just into the 2000s. Um, obviously I can't just use one computer to run through all that software and test all that software because some will run too slow, some will run too um, fast. So I thought this was probably a good medium to uh, start off with and hopefully we can get the vast majority of the software, especially the games, to um, work on this computer. So what we've got is, uh, it's got a 25 megahertz, well it's a 33 megahertz um, CPU but I've actually just underclocked it to 25 megahertz. I really wanted um, a 386 to do this with, something like a 386 SX16 or an SX20. But um, I haven't got one. Uh, I would really love to get hold of a 386 motherboard actually. Uh, a 16 or a 20 would be great. Cause it's one. I've got early computers. I've got um, an original IBM PC obviously. I've got um, Pentium systems. I've got this 486 system as um, a 25 megahertz system and I've got another 486 which has got, um, I think it's an evergreen um, something like a DX280 or some DX475 or something like that. It's got one of the later um, add-on processors in it which um, makes it a bit more, you know, it's around the between 18 and 100 megahertz type um, speed. Which will be alright for a good game of Doom or something like that on, but some of the software I've got I have a feeling would run a little bit quick on that. It's pro some of the software may even run a little bit fast on this to be honest. Uh, but I thought we'd start with this one and um, have a look through some of the software that, um, like I said, came in the lot. What I think I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put um, in the lot. I found a copy of Windows for Workgroups, so I'm not going to do it on this video. But what I probably am going to do as well is I'm going to install this on um, this computer, just so we've got basically a decent um, window, an early Windows operating system to um, play with as well because I saw that some of that software is very early Windows based software so uh, we can look at that. I'll do the rest of the videos of this thing down into my uh, down in my office where I can get this computer set up a bit better uh, with the camera but I just thought I'd do a quick one today just to see if the computer is going to do what we want it to do. I've got uh, the re one reason I've picked this is because it's got both um, 3.5 inch and five and a quarter inch floppies, and some of the software that I've got obviously is on um, five and a quarter like that. So I thought we'd uh, fire it up. I'll take you through the specs of this thing. Like I said, I've, it's got a 486 um, SX25 processor. It's got four megabytes of RAM. It's got a really awful clone sound blaster type um, sound card, but that's all we'll need for this. Um, it's got a 420 megabyte um, IDE hard drive, which it's to be honest, that hard drive really is on its last legs. So I've repaired it a couple of times um, over the years, but it does still work at the moment. So um, we'll use that until it, uh, basically until it dies a death, and when that hard drive dies a death, it'll get replaced with an SSD or something like that. But um, let's get it fired up, and what I'll watch. So what I will do is I'll put the case on it because that hard drive makes a hell of a racket and if I uh, don't put the case on it you're not going to be able to hear me speak over the uh, over the din of the hard drive so let's uh, let's put the case on in fact I can actually move the monitor Oops. I can knock everything over while I do it as well um, we can move the monitor up there like that and I will uh, I'll focus you up on the monitor and you can see what I'm doing so let's get the computer fired up. It doesn't sound too bad actually with the um, with the case on. With the case off, it does sound a little bit. Uh, we can just hear the whine of the hard drive there in the background. Let's test both floppy drives. 
It's got MS-DOS um, 6.2 installed, and that's pretty much all that's on here, if uh, we just do a DIR. Oh, it's got a few other interesting little things that I use. It's got um, some software to communicate with the Atari um, 800 line of computers. You can basically, using that software and the parallel port and a little interface uh, that I knocked up years ago, um, you can use this as an Atari disk drive and put um, Atari disk images on it and then the Atari actually thinks this is a disk drive. It's a, it's a, before all the new, the modern uh, ways of getting software onto the old Ataris um, came in, that was um, one of the main ways you did it. I also used to use this um, years and years ago with a piece of software called Star Commander. I've not got that on here now um, because I did um, format it when I got this hard drive working again. It's got the Atari stuff on it. But Star Commander was basically exactly the same thing but for the Commodore 64 as where uh, I used this old PC to basically emulate a disk drive for the uh, C64. We've got a uh, games directory on there and I think, there's, I think there's like Wolf 3D in there and that's about it. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's got Wolf 3D on it, so with no games on it, so this is a good opportunity to um, stick some games on it as well and uh, see what we can do. So I've actually got it um, usable. Right, I've got a box of discs here. And what have we got? Well, the first one's not going to be much use to us. It's, um, it's an old LAN driver disc, so uh, we won't look at that one. Next one, there's nothing marked on it, but we can um, we can certainly have a look, see what's on that one. Um, oh, COBOL. That could be quite cool to have a look at. Again, one that's not got anything marked on it. We've got a, a PC Plus Super Disc. So we can see what um, we can see what we've got on that. And these other discs in here, actually. I, I, I don't think they've got, um, oh, we can try them, but I think they might be actually BBC discs. But we'll certainly try them, we'll try them in here, it's not going to do them any harm, it's not going to damage them or anything. In fact, let's start with them, and we'll see if they, they actually are PC discs, or whether they are indeed, um, if they are indeed BBC. In fact, that first one, oh, no it is, it is alright. I thought it was stuck, that one then, but no, it does, it does move. Let's stick that in the drive. Um, B cola. Now, I'm, like I said, I was pretty sure they might be um, Acorn desks, uh, BBC desks, and I'm pretty uh, sure they are. So we'll give up on them ones, and we will try them ones when I dig a um, dig a BBC out. So I had a feeling that they might be BBC discs. Yeah. And they all seem to have a little um, a star on them, so I think someone's already marked them in the past as far other Oh that's cool. I've not seen them in years. Have you ever seen them before? That's how you write protect a uh, one of the old five and a quarter inch discs. I've never actually seen them stuck to a uh, stuck to a thing like that before. That's handy to keep. Let's uh, let's try these th these few. These might um, be PC ones. Let's have a look if I can get it out of the sleeve. Oh, it's just the glue, the actual um, right protects falling off it, and it's stuck it to the uh, stuck. It, oh no! Right, that one's not going in. If we look there, can we see on that disc there? I'll move, just move it. Can you see the lines scored in it? So that's obviously not a, not a good disc. We're not even going to attempt to put that in the drive because there's a chance that will just wreck my drive. So we'll stick that one to one side. Again, this one's stuck to the uh, sleeve as well. And that one. This, these have obviously been used in um, a computer with a, a failing failing head in the drive because that's also got a, um, a big score in the disc. So again we'll put that one to one side. Let's have a look at the last one of these. Again, that's the, exactly the same again if you can see. The disc's been really badly scored so we'll stick that one to one side as well. We won't try them in this, um, 
in this drive. Let's have a look. Oh, that one's okay. This is the um, Super Disc, which is an old um, PC um, PC magazine like cover disc. Let's stick that in and let's see if that's going to do anything. This is from um, it's PC Plus Super Disc issue 62, November 1991. So let's see if this is going to um, this is going to load. Let's have a go. Eco on. It's actually not found reading drive B, so that's not working either. Let's just give it a quick retry, just to see. Nope. Let's go. So that one again will stick to one side. Let's try another disc. Now these ones, like I said, I'm not even sure whether these are, these are high density. Um, I don't know whether these have actually got anything on them or not. There's nothing on the label, but we'll try them, we'll have a look. Again. Okay that's not reading. These could all be bad or they could all like I said actually be um, acorn discs nope again that's another one with no uh, nothing so far let's try the last of them Nope. They could just be blank. I mean, they would come up as a um, general failure if they weren't formatted. And this next one says COBOL on it, which is an old programming language. It says, M it says M5 COBOL. So, could it be for side M5? I don't know. The disc looks in good condition. It's not got any scoring on it like that other, what them other discs have. So let's... Uh, We'll see, try it in the drive anyway. Oh, well, it's read it. It looks like we've got some, um, perhaps some COBOL programs. There's no EXE files or there, anything there. Um, I suppose I'll have to get a copy of the COBOL language if I want to do anything with that. But at least it reads. And it shows, uh, shows that some of these discs obviously will still be valid. I'll stick that to one side. I've got another box of um, discs as well. Another box of five and a quarters, and then we'll have a look at some of the 3.5 inch discs we've got. Now let's see what we've um, got. Oh, well, that might be quite useful. We've got. Multimate, which is professional word processor. I'm not sure what date this. Oh, 1985. Right, so this is quite early. Um, boot stroke system disk. This could be quite cool to run on the um, original my 5150. Actually, let's see if it'll um, do anything. You well, it's, it's booted. Well, it's uh, read the disc anyway. Let's try it. Didn't exactly sound great, but let's see if it's going to load up. That's if it's actually going to load on this uh, computer anyway. This computer might be a bit too uh, a bit too new for it. And it seems to have just hung at that. Yeah, I don't seem happy with that. So there's a chance that this computer is a little bit on the new side for uh, for that. Or it, actually it needs to boot, because it says boot slash system disk, but I can't see anything on there which I would um, associate with booting the disk. Also, there's anything else. It's got a spell checker with it, which 
tutorial desk, advanced utility desk. We'll look at that later in a more detailed um, in a more detailed video. I might actually see if we can fire that up on my um, 5150. It looks like it's that kind of e well, it's a bit later than 5150, but um, it's that era of software. I think it really needs to run an um, XT class machine. So we'll stick that to one side for now. We're not having a lot of luck with these discs, are we? We've certainly got the. Uh, so we've certainly got them um, other discs to go through. We've got a what else we've we got? Ah, I think this might be someone's um, actual working copy of it. Let's try sticking this in and having a look at this. Oh, we're going to have to do a reboot, I think, because that locks it up. There we go. Just like the computer reboot. Right, let's have a look now. Deco on. Well, that looks a bit more, uh, a bit more like it. So this is a boot, obviously a bootable disc, but this is something someone's put together themselves. Let's try um, seeing if it'll run. So it may just crash the computer like the other one did, but we'll see. No, that actually seems to be doing something this time. There we go. Multimate professional word processor. Well, it's quite. It certainly would look all right. I mean, obviously we've got it on a VJ monitor here, but it wouldn't look bad in on a mono monitor. This. Right, we're going to do. We're not going to bother looking at this. We'll return to DOS. I just wanted to see whether the software actually loaded. So we'll have to look at the original discs some more and actually see whether um, there's something wrong with them. But that at least um, that at least booted them. Let's have a look what else we got in that lot. And we've got another copy of that. We've got a copy of Lotus One Two Three System Disc. We've got a couple of discs here that look interesting. We've got um, IBM DOS. Uh, that is, I don't know what I don't even say what. Oh, three point two one that. IBM DOS three point two one. We've got a disc here that says Golf on it. But if you look at single sided double density, that's quite interesting. We'll try that one. And we've got one there that says Monopoly on it. Bear in mind that these again could be Acorn discs. I think they're all might be mixed up. The disc release looks in good condition. So let's uh let's stick this in and see if it actually is going to do anything. Right, golf. Let's try it. Hmm. That's it. Well, that seems to have locked the computer up. Restart the computer again now. I'll try some of the uh, try some of the other options on there. What have we got? We've got Golf A. Arch, let's try Golf A. See what that does.
original disc not found. I wonder if this is like a say. Let's try Arch. See what that does. I do like going through old discs that you find. You can find all kinds of interest in yeah, original disc not found. I wonder if that's anything. Let's no key. Let's try that. Nokia already installed. I will give up with that for now. Because I do have plenty of... Uh, I've got a couple of golf games in the whole lot. That might just be like a backup from one of them. I'm really not sure. We've got some other... In we'll see whether Monopoly does anything. And we've got a Lotus 123 system disc. We'll see if that does anything. And we'll um, have a quick look at some 3.5 inch discs which are in the lot. Excuse me. Right, let's have a look at Monopoly, see if that does anything. No, I think that might have. Uh... No, I don't think that's very happy. Right, let's uh, fail that. Finally, let's just quickly try this Lotus One Two Three disc and see if this one's going to read. Yeah, that reads. Let's try that. And that certainly does load. Press numlock. seems to um, work but again that's probably more um, akin for my old um, IBM PC so we'll stick that to one side for now because I do want some software I can play on my um, 5150 with so that's certainly one that we can have a play with on the 5150 again we've got that um, Multimate we can have a play with that on the 5150 We'll stick them away for now, and we're, uh, I'll stick all the rest of the five and a quarter inch, because we've certainly still got some of them that we're um, going to investigate on the BBC. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's have a look in some of these boxes, and see what we've got in the boxes. We've got a load of, um, load of 3.5 inch discs here. Graphics server. What that one is? MATLAB license data. Modules. An old Dell disk. Let's have a quick dig through this next box. Nostalgia nerd that has a, um, a section he does, isn't it called "What's the hell on my what hell What's is the hell that's on my disc" or something like that. These seem to have people's um, I don't know saved files on them. I think. DB3 Plus. That's um, an old databasing software, I remember, I think I used to use that myself. 
Uh, let's get out of this. No. Let's fail that. Let's go to A. Make my backup. That's um, been some backup software has been used to create that. Let's try this disk. Okay, that's failure. Now that could be that that's in where the ACAR and FireMats. We'll have to dig the A7000 out, I think, and um, have a look at some of these on um, the A7000. Let's try this one. Again, another backup disc. So there seems to be quite a lot of um, backup discs here. Let's try this one. This says post A on it. Right, DE. Let's try that. Don't know what that's done. Not very much by the look of it. It's going to, again, it's got a backup. Let's try this um, a luminous yellow orange disc there. Well, yellow, sorry. That really is luminous, dear me. Blessing. So we seem to have some documents on there. I'm not, I'm not going to look into the documents, obviously, because um, there's probably personal data on some of these. I certainly go back in time a little bit. We've got um, dates of like 2000 on these discs. So, I mean, they're 18 years old since these files were created. But even so, um, I don't want to be showing anyone's personal data um, over the internet. Even Like I said, we don't know what happened to the guy that belonged to this. It all come from a house clearance... Um, so I'm guessing the poor chat's probably deceased now, but even so, um, you've got to be careful. I mean, I love looking at old software and people's old um, files and what have you, but you do have to be respectful. I mean, they are, you know, people's lives that you're looking at here, really, and uh, people sometimes weren't that careful with um, data destruction. So there's all, there could be literally anything on some of these disks. So we do have to bear that in mind. I've got one last disc here that I thought I'd look at. Um, it may actually be an Acorn disc because it says Strong Arm Extras on it, but we'll uh, we'll just see if it's going to do anything on here. There was a fair bit of Acorn um, stuff in the lot. Let's have a quick look. But this, like I said, this could very well be a um, an Acorn disc. Yeah, I think it is. Let's uh, fail that. Well, I don't know now. No. There we go. Go back to C column. But anyway, we've done what I wanted to do, which is um, prove that the computer is going to at least be viable for loading a fair chunk of the software that we um, got in the lot so it's not not viable to load everything we've um, we've got because it's it's about middle of the road I mean, some of that software was designed to run on very early um, IBM PCs some of it's designed to run on um, Pentium systems some of it is designed to run on this kind of, like perhaps three three and four eight six systems so I think the majority of it is around the 3 and 4, 8, 6 era. So we're probably good starting off with this um, this computer to run it on. We can also, we could always uh, upgrade this um, computer as well. I do have um, a couple of overdrive processors we could try in it. So I've got the one in my other, um, my other 4, 8, 6. But that doesn't have a five and a quarter inch disk drive in it. It's just uh, it's got a three point five inch and a CD ROM drive. Um, this way, this this is more useful for the fact that it's got the five and a quarter inch disk drive already in it. Um, 
I'm going to leave it there for now anyway. Like I said, this video is more about just um, giving you a quick look at this computer and what we're actually going to use for loading um, some of the software we want to test. So uh, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you uh, enjoyed that and you didn't find that too boring. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.